Public and Women's Club for having us here tonight also. Um, this is a, a great format. Uh, Tom and I, and sometimes Chris, uh, have been uh, to uh, several of these already, uh, so um, I guess we're getting used to each other <laughs> a little bit being on stage together. Uh, Jennifer gave you a little bit of my background, and that background includes helping small businesses uh, as a commercial lender uh, in their finance areas for many, many years, approximately 25 years. So I, you know, I'd like to help the people uh, of this county and the state in the same way, utilizing my financial background uh, as much as I can. But tonight, one of the things I'd like to do is to hopefully get across an idea to you. And Is that large enough for you to see? Okay. When you look at this picture, okay, you've got a big blue thing, a big red thing, smaller green, brown, yellow, okay. Does this look like the structure of our government today? If I were to tell you that this represented the federal government, the red represented the state government, county government, and so on, is that kind of a picture that makes sense to you today? 30 seconds, I'm going to you something. Anyway, that, you know, most people will recognize this as kind of the way we are. Our federal government has taken control and is in control of most of the issues in this country. One of the things I'd like to do during my campaign and then afterwards when I'm elected is to have our government look something like this. Okay. Does that look different? What's different about it? Yeah, the state's a lot bigger, the federal government's a lot smaller, okay, the county's larger, the townships are larger. What I'd like to see is for us to try to get these issues that have been dividing us for so long back into local control. All right, that's, that's the purpose. There's no overlapping areas where several levels of government tell you to do one thing. It doesn't come from miles away up in Washington, D.C. It comes locally from the people you know and have elected. So that's the point I'm going to try to get across to you today. Thank you. Thank you. And Jennifer, the question was, why are we running? Yeah. Okay. It, it's a difficult thing to explain when you go through life um, experiencing so many different things. Uh, you, you take different roads, you do different things, and uh, somehow that road for me led into the chairmanship of the Knox County Republican Party. When I got here, uh, I was not real disheartened with the Republican Party because, you know, they did stand up and fight for a lot of the goals and ideals in which we all believe. What I didn't see was any solutions coming from that party to solve the major issues which confront us. I entered this race because I feel that I do have solutions to those problems and ways in which we the people of Knox County and we the people of the state of Ohio can get from one place to another. Again, okay, the question is, who is presenting solutions to you that make sense, that could possibly be accomplished to solve our problems? I'm going to put this back on the first one, and Cindy is probably going to get out of time. The system we've developed, you see, this federal government is spending one and a half trillion dollars more per year than it takes in. It's accumulated twelve and a half trillion dollars in debt, and it has legacy costs of about a hundred and seven trillion dollars that we all have to pay. This is not a sustainable future for us. We know, we, how are we going to pay it back? I don't think we can. So we've got to stop it and change it somehow. And that's why I'm offering, through the use of the Tenth Amendment to the United States Constitution, 
the guarantee states all of those rights not given to the federal government and through our state legislature to make it look more like this. <laughs> Are you surprised? <laughs> I hope not. You know what that one bill would be? That one bill would be along those lines where the state of Ohio declares to the federal government that the federal government does not have rights over most of the social issues that it now controls that those would be done totally on a state basis or even a more local basis. That's the first one I would do. And I don't know. There are a lot of states out there. Let's see, how many? 12 to 15 other states, I believe, who are undergoing kind of the same thought processes. Uh, Ohio hasn't been one of them. I'd like to gather together with those 12 or 15 other states and put together a coalition of some, let's see, we would need probably 35 total, so we need another 20 states or so, all right, to go with us. We can get the Constitution of the United States changed if we want to, so that Ohio can claim control over these issues. That would be the first bill that I would propose. Uh, the answer to that question is, uh, I believe, it has got a $787 billion more in debt than the country. That's the easy answer, and that's what it's done. How much has come back to Ohio? I, I, I don't know. I, um, I am not familiar with all of the projects. I know there, that there have been several. Um, I believe there uh, have been a total of maybe 3,500 jobs or thereabouts, supposedly. Uh, created or saved okay, by that stimulus bill. Yeah, saving jobs, that's okay. Uh, how do you measure that? I don't know. But we, the impact has not been great. What it does, what the government does with that money, it's yours. It creates a short-term job for somebody. And in that respect, yes. But it doesn't create any long-term solution for more jobs in the future. Maybe it creates more infrastructure. It does, probably. That's what they're using a lot of the money for. But did you ever think, you know, we've got an awful lot of infrastructure already, which we are having trouble taking care of. Here in Knox County, how many bridges do we have to get repaired throughout the United States? The money is not there. We've built infrastructure and built infrastructure and you know what, now we're having trouble coming up with the money to just keep it. So to create more infrastructure is probably not the best way to go. Um, you probably realize that the government, through the stimulus bill, is spending approximately $240,000 to create one job that pays somewhere between forty dollars and $50,000. So you as a people are paying almost $300,000 per job, okay, through that stimulus bill. To me, that doesn't make economic sense, and it shouldn't be done. 